All right, thank you uh, for, for the invitation to speak to us. Uh, lovely to be here in Princeton. And um, normally I wouldn't be uh, chintzy about time, but since we're sorry, I, I just want to sort of record maybe that I will probably go um, uh, until um, about an hour from now. So if you have to leave earlier, I understand. Um, I'll try, try, to, try to pack it in, but um, a lot of things I want to tell you. Um, so uh, yeah, so the work um, I'm going to talk about today is joint with Will Solid. And so um, some of you probably heard his uh, talk last week. And so we'll, we'll, we'll follow on from there. But if you didn't hear that talk, it will also be self-contained. All right, so I want to start with and one of the um, motivating questions. Uh, so, um, Cohen Lindstra and uh, Cohen Lindstra Marnet in, in a few papers were asking um, as so K varies um, in a family. Of number fields. And so for the kind of families that they were thinking about, where you fix some Galois group and you fix some infinity, like some signature information, but for, for, for what I'm going to say, you can imagine other, other families as well. Um, they wanted to know what is the distribution of the class group. Um, okay, so you can just think, okay, I've got a bunch of number fields and some family I'm interested in, and then I want to know, you know, how often do I see what kind of, of, of class groups? And um, now I want to put this question in um, analogy with some, some other questions. Okay, so we have, um, or thinking of, we think of some family of number fields um, and we, we can ask about the class group. So we're thinking of K is varying and we wanna say, okay, what kind of class groups are appearing? By class field theory, another way to think about um, the class group is that it's the Gal group of the maximal unramified abelian extension of K. Um, and from that point of view, it's naturally the abelianization of another group, the Gal group of the maximal unramified extension. So this is maximal unramified uh, extension. So the class group is the abelianization of this, uh, this profinite group. Now this is a non, non abelian group. It might be infinite, it could be finite. Um, uh, and we could ask more generally, as K varies, what's the distribution of profinite groups that we see here? Um, and you can also think um, of similar questions in function fields over finite fields. So finite extensions of FQT, and you can ask about these, these same uh, same kind of groups here. And now I'm not, I'm not focused on making the an analogy exactly uh, a perfect, but just to say there's, you know, similarly um, kind of non abelian group that uh, plays a similar role and uh, it's, it's abelianization you could ask about. Now, of course, these exactly, this is a, you know, analogy, these exactly correspond um, to curves with maps to P1 over FQ. And in that geometric language, you might, um, you know, you might write uh, these in another way, right? This is, this Gal group of the maximal unramified extension is the fundamental group of the curve. And this is that abelian, you know, and this, and this is the abelianization of that fundamental group. And, so I have the bright pylon abelianization, and I'll just write something more friendly. We're just thinking about, we're asking about, um, you know, we're asking ab about 
what kind of groups you see here, you could ask like, well, what are, what are like the, the H1s of the curves with say various coefficients, imagining like in ranging over um, all the different coefficients. All right, now we're gonna put, uh, <laughs> as the title suggested, um, uh, there's one more, one more um, uh, piece in this analogy, which is, Three manifolds M. So um, because um, you know a a curve uh, say over F Q bar acts geometrically, for example, with respect to a tall cohomology like a two dimensional object, but then F Q uh, is one dimensional. So these are like three dimensional things. So like three dimensional manifolds, and that sort of three-dimensionality carries all the way over to number fields where we have our invariant duality, which tells us that number fields are kind of like a three-dimensional um, uh, thing cohomologically. And so, um, uh, so in this analogy, you would just ask about, say, you know, literally the fundamental group um, of the three-manifold, or let me just say the profile completion of the fundamental group, because uh, th those are the kind of groups we're thinking about a profiling groups over here, um, and you could ask about um, the, the first first homology or cohomology group of the manifold. And so these three manifolds um, are compact, closed three manifolds. So that means compact without boundary. Those are the kind of three manifolds I'm thinking of. Um, Can you put today. the analogy that, yeah. that primes correspond to knots in in this context? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so so this 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 analogy um, from sort of the number field and function field to three manifold side is a beautiful analogy where you can write many many uh, more lines of what things correspond to other things and and one of the things one of the sort of beautiful pieces of the analogy is that it primes correspond to to knots. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So. Um, so I just wanted to broaden the context to these are all in some ways structurally similar kinds of things. And in all of these questions, we could, in all of these situations, we could ask as these objects vary, how do these, you know, non-abelian profinite groups um, vary or, you know, or their abelianizations. Um, all right. So um, All right, so Colin Lindstrom, Martin, who I mentioned at the beginning, so they gave conjectures for the, in certain situations, for, for the distribution of the class group of K, at least at, you know, primes not dividing the order of the Galois group. Um, and then, um, so, um, Mala uh, point, pointed out, um, as I think probably Mo mentioned last week, that, that these predictions were wrong um, for the part of the class group that involves primes dividing the number of, of roots of unity in the relevant fields. Um, and so I think last week, Will talked about how we could make corrected um, predictions uh, for for the distribution of class groups um, when sort of roots of unity were present in this situation. And so today, um, I want to talk about the work that we're doing towards uh, these, towards the, the non-abelian version. I guess now that I wrote pi one, I mean, this of course is also like literally a, a pi one, right? This is pi one of spectrum. Okay. All right. Um, sort of towards the the um, high one you know, distributions, and a picture emerges that is, I think, really beautiful, but significantly more complicated um, uh, in the non-abelian setting. It's hard to even think about how you would sort of describe a distribution on these profinite groups when you have 
but in abelian groups, you can sort of imagine, you know, pointing at each group and saying, well, how often do I get this one or that one? And, um, uh, and we don't really sort of know what all the groups even are in, you know, in a, candidate groups are in a sense here. And so um, to, uh, to help in our understanding, we started um, by trying to understand some this in the three manifold um, case. And so I'm gonna to talk today about our understanding about the distribution of profile and completions of three manifolds. And that paper, we have a you know paper with all of this that I'm gonna talk about that's been out um, already on the archive. And we have work in progress um, on the function field uh, setting. And we think that will eventually lead to, uh, to number field um, conjectures. So yeah, so my goal for today is to talk about um, uh, the work that um, we've done to understand the uh, the fundamental groups of three manifolds, and since this is a number theory seminar, you can sort of imagine uh, if you you know, weren't interested in three manifolds uh, before, you can you can um, I hope think about how that that this is something that is moving us towards uh, at least good conjectures eventually in the in the number field case for the distribution of the fundamental groups in that setting. So, all right, now that I'm going to talk about, right, so that's just the sort of motivation. Uh, now that I want to talk about some actual results, I just think, so how do we get this family of three manifolds? How do we get three manifolds? So, how to get so some kind of distribution, you know, a, a distribution of three manifolds. So we can ask about the distribution it, it gives on the fundamental group, or you can think, how do we get a random three manifold? Um, and we use um, models suggested by Dunfield and Thurston of a random Haggard splitting. So what does this look like? You start with two genus G handle bodies. So these are like uh, solid three manifolds with boundary. Um, and if you'd like to get a three manifold without boundary, you can glue them together along their boundaries. So uh, this is called the Haggard splitting of a three manifold. So you get the three manifold by taking um, these two handle bodies and you glue them along the genus G surface that each of them has as the boundary. And then you get here, uh, you know, a, a compact three manifold without a boundary. Now, the question is, how do you decide how you identify uh, this genus G surface with the other genus G surface? Well, there's, um, a number of ways to do that that are essentially given by the mapping class group of the surface. So to get um, a distribution on three manifolds, you can get that from, uh, say, a distribution on the mapping class group, uh, or you can, you know, take a, if you have some kind of random element of the, the mapping class group, then you get a random three manifold here. And so this is, you know, via, via random, Mapping class, and are you fixing G now? So far, so far. But I'm about to. The next thing I'll, I'll do is not. But um, let me just say. So, how do you get a random mapping class? Um, you can do uh, do something like pick some generators and take a random word of uniformly of length up to L and let L go to infinity. All right, so it's not a single distribution, but a limit of distribution. And I'm going to kind of ignore that limit in L as the, the length of, you know, the word in your generators of the mapping class group goes to infinity, because that turns out not to be such an interesting limit in, in the problem. Um, but of course, 
that. Now we're gonna have another one that is. So this gives you a lot of three manifolds, but it doesn't get you all of them. Not every three manifold has a Hager splitting of genus G, but every, every three manifold has a Hager splitting of some genus. Yes. So these guys are all oriented, right? The way you said. That. Yes. And of course, the number field is something like a, a, a unoriented three manifold. It, 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 oh, it's like a it, 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 R and duality. It's it's like an oriented three manifold. But it has an orientation sheaf given by the roots of unity, so to speak. Which yes, is, which is not trivial. So I know I just wanted yes. to that's of interest to you to model non-oriented. Yes, that, and I'm going to talk about we're going to where the orientation comes in. But I mean that's absolutely crucial, and is why you know um, why going to three manifolds has helped sort of understand what's going on with the, why roots of unity are affecting things. And it's precisely because of the orientation that you get that kind of goes as far as you have roots of unity in the field. So yeah, great question. Um, yes, so um, yeah, so when, when you, uh, this will come up later, but yes, when you do this, you get, you get a, a, a oriented three manifold, and you know, you can pick a way that you're doing it to get an oriented three manifold. All right, so, but this, to get all three manifolds, we're gonna then let the genus go to infinity. Um, uh, so that, this is, you know, this is what Dunfield and Thurston suggested, the kind of somehow sample uh, three manifolds. When you do this, now you see all three manifolds because all three manifolds have a Hagrid splitting of, of some, some genus. So Dunfield and Thurston, In this situation where you, you take this sort of asymptotic distribution of three manifolds and you look at their fundamental groups, they, they calculated some, calculated um, some averages of various statistics over, over this distribution, you get a fundamental group coming from taking three manifolds um, in this way. And in particular, they noted that these averages had a limit. The, the, the cases that they, they did, you know, that they had a limit as G goes to infinity. And I just want to point out that that is not a priori obvious you know, I said there was some limit here as the length of the mapping class where it goes to infinity. That's like pretty easy to see that there's limiting behavior here. But when you go from um, a, you know, a Hager splitting of genus G to G plus one and G plus two, it's not, it's, it's much less clear uh, that there should be any kind of limiting behavior as um, G goes to infinity. I mean, in the end, of course, it has to do with some homological stability of, of these groups, but, you know, there's a real phenomenon there. And so then they, they asked, um, you know, and they asked, asked about several more sort of averages that you might try to compute um, uh, on this distribution as G goes to infinity. So what we do, um, so uh, we, find the limiting distribution of these groups in, in the space of groups um, and see that, that it exists as G goes to infinity, uh, which, you know, like, like I said, it's not, it's not clear that such, such a limit um, of distributions had to exist. And so as a consequence of that, it, it answers their, all their questions about like, oh, can you do, you know, can you understand, does this average have a limit? Does this average have a limit? What is it? Because we find very explicitly the limiting distribution of the groups themselves. And so then when you want to ask about any kind of function of that, it, it, it comes out of, of, of this, this very explicit distribution. And so, yeah, so maybe I should say we do this quite explicitly. Um, and one of the things that is, is explicit about it is that it allows us to find the support of the distribution. 
Now I'm going to tell you actually quite precisely what this space of groups is and the topology and so so that that these kind of things make make sense like the support of the distribution. Um, so 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 that's just a consequence really of the explicitness of which when I say we find a limiting distribution we don't just prove that a limit exists but we write down formulas uh, uh, for it, and that that in particular allow us to find the support of the distribution, which is in all profile groups. There's some some things that can't happen um, uh, from uh, from fundamental groups of three manifolds, and then we also show that there does not it, there do not exist any three manifolds whose Fundamental groups are outside of this support. And so I want to point out here, because of the way in which we're taking a limit of distributions, uh, one of the features of this, you know, of this way of sort of seeing all the three manifolds is that any particular three manifold, even even though it might have many Hegard splittings, occurs 0% of the time. So every single three manifold is contributing, you know, itself 0%. Uh, of course, there are countably many, many three manifolds. So it certainly a priori could have been the case that there are some three manifolds uh, that have, have sort of quite atypical uh, fundamental groups, and they, you know, because they happen 0% of the time, they're outside of the support of the distribution where you really see the bulk of, of, of things that, that a priori could have happened, uh, but it doesn't. So that's, um, uh, that is a sort of interesting feature of the, of the story here. Does, does that sound a bit of um, the orientability question? Or? Well, um, you mean like if if you consider the unoriented things, would it be different? Yeah, I don't know. For example, I mean, I think the, our approach, if you had wanted to consider various models where you had maybe non-oriented manifolds, you could probably do a similar thing. And I think that our kind of approach would let you find a limiting distribution and the support of the distribution, but it's not clear if this would be true. Right. So this sort of was isn't true for some formal reason. Like you, you would have to really, in some particular case, like look and see if it's if, if it's true. All right. Yes. Oh, uh, I was just wondering why this is the three manifolds. Is it like counting by discriminant or something? Or how do I? Yeah. I yeah. So, so it's. Um. A perfect analogy, like so, we don't have this three manifold as a branched cover of another three manifold, which is really what would like a number field extension would look like. So this isn't. We haven't set it up in this way because it's the most perfect number field analogy. Um, uh, because it's not that we're going to use the answers that we get in the three manifold case to tell us what the answer should be in the next case. We're using the methods. And in fact, we use results from the three manifold case as part of the, the proof of the methods of the function field case. So um, yeah, so we haven't been concerned with sort of setting up the, the most precise analogy with the number field case because this is more about developing the methods to solve a problem like this than, than what, exact, you know, what exact answers we get. Um, but it, it, this is this is just one way um, uh, to to uh, consider three manifolds, and we we certainly ask and wonder, um, you know, if you have some other way of of considering th random three manifolds that sees every three manifold with probability zero. Um, I think that's important. Just like when we order number fields, you should see every particular number field with with. With, with probability zero, then I would guess that you will get the get the same results if you're really seeing all three manifolds. Um, uh, but you know that it's that it is a good good question to to try to understand other other ways of getting families of three manifolds. You would get that you'd get the same distribution. Yes, yes. I I think um, 
Yeah, I think that's very likely. I'll just sort of briefly say that there are reasons um, for that. Um, in easier context, um, we have uh, there are universality theorems that sort of prove that you can build these um, random groups in a wide range of ways and all the limiting distributions kind of converge to some universal distribution. And so that makes me feel like the, probably a very wide range of ways of building three manifolds that really see all the three manifolds, but each of them with probability zero would probably give the same distribution on the fundamental groups that we see here. That is what I would guess. Good questions, thank you. Okay, so how to give this distribution? <laughs> So um, we're starting with some, the, the, where, where does it live? So there's some space um, of um, isomorphism classes of profinite groups. Uh, if that worries you, uh, we, we live entirely within small profinite groups, ones that have finitely many homomorphisms to any finite group. Um, uh, so, okay, that's just a set, a set of isomorphism classes. Uh, and so to talk about some kind of limiting distribution, we, we need, need a topology on this set, some way of thinking of how different profiling groups are close to one another or not. Um, so, and the way we do this is we look at them at many different levels. Um, and so let me give a sort of very concrete example of how you might think about uh, these levels. So if A is, say, a finitely generated abelian group, one way to look at A with various levels of precision um, uh, is you could look at uh, A um, uh, sort of tensor Z mod N Z as N ranges. And then if you want to say, oh, our two groups close, you know, you could say A and A prime are close when A tensor Z mod N Z is the same as A prime tensor Z mod N Z. And you're imagining especially class groups. So really also just even think about finite abelian groups. And you can you can imagine if you take Right, if this is just a finite abelian group, as you take different ends, you sort of see a little more of the group, a little more of the group. Um, and, uh, and you can say, you know, as you take more or bigger ends, these two abelian groups are, are closer and closer if they agree when you tensor them um, with C mod NZ. Or, and this is, this is the same as taking A mod and A for, for more and more ends. So that's um, that is the example uh, to give the um, the idea of closeness, say, in the space of groups. That's what it looks like very concretely in the abelian case. And so now, in the the general case. So in general, what we call a level C is a finitely generated formation of finite groups. I'm gonna say what that means. So, um, so formation means that it should be a set of isomorphism classes closed under two operations, closed under taking quotients and subdirect products. So that means uh, subgroups of the direct of a direct product of two groups that project uh, onto 
both factors subjectively. Okay, so it's closed under some operations and then finitely generated, given that it, you know, so closed under these operations means that there's some finite list of isomorphism classes of groups that when you close it under these operations, you get it. Um, you get the set, all right? And so, um, so for example, this Z mod NZ uh, generates, if you take it and you close it under quotients in these subdirect products, it generates the, the um, you know, the level of abelian groups of exponent N. Something that projects the right product that projects that projects on each projects seductively on both sides. Yeah. So I should say so. Okay. So it's a, so so some um, uh, subgroup of A tends to B such that it subjects on A and subjects onto B. If A and B were in, then any any subgroup like this. Is. All right, so you can think about, okay, yeah, I could get from Z mod NZ, I mean, I can get all the, by taking quotients and even just products, uh, you can get all the abelian groups of exponent N. Um, and so now given, given this level, there is a good notion of a, um, a pro C completion. So GC is the inverse limit overall quotients continuous quotients, you know, when we have a pro-finite group um, that are in that, that, that level, that finitely generated formation. So for example, if I take C to be the level generated by Z mod NZ, um, the, the, uh, the GC here, the inverse limit of these things will simply be the um, abelianization of the group tensor with Z mod NZ. So just that kind of like that example we saw, saw over there. Okay, and so in our um, context for the profinite kind of groups that we'll, we'll be studying, these will be finite groups. So these will be, these GC will be, will be finite. So kind of like here, even if you had started with, for example, um, an A that was, was infinite, uh, when you ask you if it's a finitely generated abelian group after you tensor with Z mod NZ, you get a finite group. So this is a way, so every level gives some canonical associated to that level, finite quotient of, um, of the profinite group. All right, and there are lots of levels. So you can throw in any, you know, finite set of finite groups and you get some level and, and, um, and you can think of the topology on this space of profinite groups as, you know, as as seen, seen the groups to sort of more, you know, larger and larger levels. So I'll just write down explicitly put the the the, the topology and so the opens basic opens of this topology are um, the set of profile groups whose level C quotient or pro C quotient is isomorphic to some fixed group as sort of H and C vary. So just like I was saying over here, you know, two groups are close together with when mod n for more and more n, they're the same. And so here two profile groups are close together with for more, if you know, as for more and more levels, more and more of these canonical finite quotients of the groups are the same. Okay. And so when I said here that we find the limiting distribution, um, so we give, we give um, explicit formulas, um, formulas for this, this limit. Um, of the, the probability that the profinite completion of these, or sorry, the pro C completion of this level C quotient of the fundamental group of your three manifold uh, is isomorphic to H. So this is the measure of, um, of the distribution 
uh, on the on this basic open, you know, for every every H and C. And so I'll just give one sort of example corollary of the formulas. Um, so you can just sort of see. So um, the limit as G, oh, here, let me just say, I need to start here. So let's say S be, let S be a finite set of primes. Um, and all right, GS, so for the pro, pro S completion, um, uh, so that's like the pro P completion, but you throw in all the, the P's and S. It's, it's not exactly one of these levels because, um, it, because uh, finitely generated doesn't apply, but there is a sort of formation of all the finite groups. So it's sort of the maximal, maximal quotient whose order is a product of times an S. Okay. Um, and so the, for example, when you fix your set of primes and you say what's the um, probability that uh, I one M S is trivial. So this is another way of saying the same thing, i.e. I one of M has no S group quotients, i.e. no finite quotients uh, whose whose order is a product of primes uh, in S. All right, I'm gonna write, write the formula, okay? So it's a product over P and S, product J goes from one to infinity of one plus P to the minus J to the minus one. Um, and that product over primes was secretly a product over the finite simple S groups. And so now we have a product over the non-abelian, Symbol S groups. And the factors there are E to the minus H2, the Schur multiplier, or second group cohomology um, of the non-dealing group divided. This is all in the exponent of E. So I wrote a little large there. Times over the size of the outer automorphism group of N. All right, so that's just explicitly a formula that tells you um, when you build a random three manifold in this way, this number gives you the probability that the fundamental group has no S group quotients. Yes. So it's like a one minus P to the minus J. Yeah. So is it possible to say simply in words why the sign is dolphin? Yeah, it's the, because it's, a, it's, a, it's really a different distribution. Um, that you're seeing here. So th this is kind of, I mean, one way of thinking about it, you could sort of see this just in the abelianization and um, uh, in the, well, in the abelianization, you get um, finite abelian groups that have uh, the uh, symmetric pairing from the torsion linking pairing, and you just get a different distribution there of groups. So this doesn't, oh. you know, this isn't abelianizing to Cohen Lenstra. It's just a different, it's it's abelianizing to a different distribution of groups that look like the you know really like co-kernels of symmetric matrices. Yes, really yeah. to orient a little bit. Yeah. Of yes. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. Any questions? Formula. I think at least I've made like some concrete statement that I hope you can like understand the meaning of yes. Oh, sorry, this man needs to Yeah. Is, is that second product, uh, I mean, the third product, well, is this a finite product or an infinite product? Uh, that's a finite product. Uh, yeah. There are plenty of simple, group, the simple groups. Yeah, but when you, re when you restrict the, 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 to a finite, a finite set of primes, it's a, the finite, finite product, yes. But um, if um, if you want to do a similar, you know, if if you yeah did a tried to to 
to understand a similar thing is as s goes goes to infinity then you you know you have have something involving um all of the non-abelian simple groups and then um you can you then then there's a question about like oh does you know what's that what's that converge to but here there's not really a convergence question because I stuck it. But it's not to, it's totally obvious. Like if you take S uh, his question, if you take S L two like F two to the M or like a prime power, it's, it's, it probably it, it, it's not a true reality. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. It's finite. Uh, no, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Great question. Um. Okay. So, all right, so, I just want to say a few things about the proof of this explicit finding the limiting distribution, and you know, including formulas. And the formulas, they all kind of look like this, except obviously they have to involve um, uh, H and C. So what these really are products over are irreducible representations of H um, in, you know, over FP and the analog of irreducible representations over non-abelian simple groups. And so here you're just seeing the version of that for the trivial group. Um, uh, and um, C comes in into sort of which representations are allowed. Um, but if you stand back very far, the formulas look, yeah, you know, this is the feel of, of all the all the formulas. Um, all right, yeah, so I want to say some things. Um, so all right, so the first really big ingredient into this proof is something uh, that um, will talked about uh, last week, which is that we have, um, developed a, a theory that allows us to see that the moments, uh, which in this case are averages of the number of surjections. So here, say something like um, uh, the average number of surjections from uh, pi one m to h, sort of over this over this Dunfield Thurston. Uh, distribution of three manifolds. So this is the average number of surjections to a fixed H. So these are the moments. Um, in general, you know, when not too large, um, uh, determine a unique um, distribution. Um, and we can give formulas, we give formulas for the distribution um, for the distribution in terms of the moments. So this is this is a big piece of what happens here um, is that we're able to find um, uh, the moments that we need and this is the kind of strategy um, and I don't want to undersell it, the importance of this, but if you were, were here last week, I hope Will uh, told you a lot, a lot about this. And so this is the sort of first, uh, what? Each eight, two, one, one. Yeah, for all, for all, all the moments. Yeah. You gave us four formulas. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to give us four else? Oh, you can have no, I think you said you wanted more formulas and you wanted fewer formulas. So, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, all right. Did I get that right? But there are many formulas on the You can see all the, all the formulas. Um, all right, so okay, that's a, that's like the general strategy of how we start. But oops, in this case, the moments turn out to be too large. <laughs> in fact, they are precisely of the size that we know there can exist different distributions with those moments. All right, um, so um, it, that uh, so we, so we need to do something more. Um, we need to how input more information, and what we do um, 
is we prove a theorem sort of in, in algebraic topology um, about three manifolds uh, restricting what the group can be. Okay, so that has nothing to do with distributions or it's just like, you know, a three manifold, its fundamental group has certain properties. And then um, by, by using that information, you can maybe understand conceptually how, well, once you add some restriction, like you know that your distribution isn't supported, you know, on all the groups, but at most on some smaller um, uh, subset, then, then maybe you have some hope. So with this restriction, with this um, restriction, um, then we can sort of carry out our, our plan to go from moments um, to the to the uh, to the distribution. And the restriction yes. means you're limiting the edges. No, we're, we're, we we know we, we're going to add in additional information about pi one bin, and I'm going to tell you what that information is. I'm going to tell you what this theorem is. We're going to say we we have still the moments for every h, but we but the point is it's not a, how, for what these averages are. There are multiple distributions that could give these these same averages. So the averages don't uniquely determine it. But once I tell you, actually, we're only allowing certain groups that obey certain certain uh, rules. Then 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 they do. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what this what this theorem um, says, or at least, at least some of some of it. Um, and then another thing that happens um, and that's really crucial uh, to do this uh, work in this case to explicitly go from the moments to, to the distribution is we actually don't work with just profinite groups. We work with oriented groups. Um, so we work with what we call oriented groups, um, same what that is, i.e. Uh, a profiling group and a class in the third group homology of the group. Now, when you have a three manifold, an oriented three manifold, it has a fundamental class and that gives you this, uh, this information. So, so we now actually ask, not about the distribution of groups, but about the distribution of oriented groups, i.e. pairs GS up to isomorphism. Um, and that- The G is pretty fine, right now. Yes. So what's the switch? It's just the, this- um, Z hat, maybe that's it. Well, let's say, well, let, or maybe, um, we 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 orientation. Maybe I should say there's an orientation when you have a three manifold. Um, one gets uh, one gets an orientation um, in right in H three of just say pi one of M with Z coefficients. Okay, is that? Um, I mean, in other and, words, yeah, but it's not pro finite yet. It's, it's, it's right, pro right. So um, it's H three of, of the the un but, the unhabited part. Well, that that but then the, and then this gives gives such a thing in the in the hadden part one. That's correct. Okay. Um. Uh. So. Um. Yeah. So. One, so I think, um, yeah, one thing I wanted to say about um, this is I think Will mentioned last week, oh, he was writing down some formulas um, in the class group case with roots of unity, but some, some he said, oh, some of them are going to get messy. And he, that's, he, didn't, he didn't give you all the formulas because they were going to get messy. And the reason that they were going to get messy is he wasn't telling you about the orientation. And the nice formulas are for the probability of getting sort of a group with the orientation data. And when you forget the orientation, what you naturally get is a sum of nice formulas over all the possible orientations. 
And so um, the, 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 the way to clear up the sort of messiness of the formulas and to get, um, to get nicer formulas and to really get formulas that look like this. So I was sort of lying when I said we get formulas like this. We, for, for, we only actually get formulas like this where we do this whole thing, but instead of with groups, we work with these oriented groups with this extra data on the groups. If you want formulas um, uh, for just the groups, they naturally come as a sum over, over all the uh, orientations. Okay, so um, So I said, I would tell you what this kind of theorem um, uh, looks like. So let M be closed, um, oriented, three manifold. That means compact without boundary. Um, uh, I'm going to tell you most of what the kind of restrictions are. All right. Um, and and they come from irreducible representations over finite fields. And so, and B, an irreducible representation of I1 M over finite field kappa. So then, so various things um, are true. Um, the dimension of the H1, the group cohomology of this group with coefficients in V um, is the same as the dimension of H1 of pi one of M in V dual. So, uh, so this is the dual representation. I just have a representational field, the, the, the dual representation. Um, and so this essentially, this, so this comes from, from Poincaré duality. And that's a restriction. You can write down finitely generated profile groups. They don't obey this. Like you don't have to have this uh, in a finite, you know, in, 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 sorry, in a finitely generated group. It doesn't have to have this property. So that's something that is special um, about uh, three manifolds. Um, uh, there's there's another so there's a uh, second condition that is similar in spirit. I'm going to tell you um, another condition that that is is different. So if V is a symplectic representation, meaning that pi one of M um, preserves a non-degenerate alternating bilinear form uh, and kappa has odd characteristic, then the dimension of H1 of pi one of M V is even. Um, and then there's a, a fourth condition that is sort of similar, uh, but more complicated because things like symplectic forms are more complicated and even characteristic where there's also a sort of parity determined. Uh, determined. So I told you sort of two of, of, of the four conditions um, of the theorem, but sort of two of them maybe have the uh, point gray duality flavor and two of them are, um, are parity restrictions. And so these are some things that are true about um, fundamental groups of three manifolds that we proved using sort of traditional algebraic topology techniques um, that aren't just true of finitely generated groups. Um, and you might think, okay, so those are some things that you that you could prove, um, but maybe there's like 16 more things that are also sort of, you know, like this and true about three manifold groups. But we show that um, for this, Topology that I described on the space of profinite groups, um, the, the set of profinite completions of three manifold groups is dense in 
in the space of um, profiling groups. satisfying, you know, the, these conditions. <laughs> um, so this is, this is not a probabilistic statement. This is just about, you know, this doesn't care about the ordering on your three manifold. This is just, um, uh, this is just a, a um, so all of the three manifold groups have profile completions, you know, that, that, I mean, and this is all just about, about finite quotients of, of a power of n. So it's, these are just statements about its profinite completion. So all of the three manifold groups obey these rules and in the space of profinite groups, the, the profinite completions of three manifold groups are, are dense uh, in, in the groups that satisfy these rules. So these are kind of all the rules that there are about three manifold groups. And so this, while this is a non-probabilistic statement, the proof of this uses our distribution because, you know, we show that any open here, you know, has, has positive measure for the distribution, i.e. with positive probability, positive probability in the Dunfield-Thurston model, you know, your group lands in the open, you know, so I, so any open you here, uh, you know, pi one m hat is in the open. So even though this is a non-probabilistic statement, we prove it. We prove the existence of three manifolds in all of these places um, uh, with, with, um, you know, with probability. So it's sort of like, oh, you want to find a three manifold like this? We, we don't write down an explicit three manifold. We show that in the Dunfield-Thurston model that you have a, positive probability of getting a three manifold sort of like this, like with, you know, GC say equal to something. And so then that, uh, uh, that means that there exists, in fact, infinitely many of them because- but, um, yeah. Is the statement now still at the level that any distribution with the moments has this property or that this number is small enough that there's a unique distribution? Yeah, no, so, so within, the set of groups that follow these rules, the moments are small enough to, to, but if you didn't have these rules here, I mean, in particular, if you don't have three and four, then, then the moments are, are too large uh, to, to, you know, to determine a unique distribution. You really need to sort of say, we're only but could it considering be groups. any distribution that has these two big moments, possibly two big moments would still have this property. Um, I mean, maybe you don't care. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so because I don't think it, it wouldn't necessarily have to have group all of its groups say like follow like rule number three here, for example. Oh. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, I just want yeah to 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 finish by saying so we, um, you know, we use this uh, sort of probabilistic method to prove existence here. And we give a lot of examples of, you know, of we can now say that there exists three manifolds with certain kinds of finite quotients and not others, that before it wasn't at all clear how you would construct. And actually it's still not clear how you would construct. We just prove that they exist because we see them with, with, with positive probability um, in, in the model. And so, um, yeah, so that's that is a kind of overview of our three manifold story, and you can read the, the details in our paper. And our work in progress is to kind of understand now a similar picture in the function field case as, as Q goes to uh, infinity. So thank you. So if it works for how you actually compute the moments? Ah, uh, yes. So, um, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So actually these, um, essentially these, um, uh, your moments, like the unoriented moments were, were 
more or less already in Dunfield and Thurston. So we um, only have to, we have to, we have to, we have to com compute these oriented moments and one uh, gets that by, you know, you can write down very explicitly what the pi one of M is um, because you've glued the, together the two handle bodies. And so, you know, you know, you have the um, Meyer Vitor sequence that gives it to you quite e explicitly in terms of the mapping class group. And then it comes down to understanding um, orbits of the mapping, you know, orbits of the mapping class group on certain surjections from the fundamental group of a surface to H. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, um, and then that involves um, uh, some known uh, stability, you know, stability for, for the action of mapping class groups. Yes. See, these like open sets have positive measures, but not mm -hmm. like no no point has positive me measure or like. Um, so the, no point in the space has has positive measure. Um, uh, uh, here, um, be, and you can you can see that um, already in the abelianization of the groups. Um, it's like the distribution of. Um, uh, class groups of imaginary quadratic fields. Like there's, you know, the, the groups are sort of getting, even the abelianizations are getting bigger and bigger. Um, and so that's that's one way to see that there's not a... Yeah. Well, okay, so and this theorem is easy to see that the, okay, the inclusion is dense, that like uh, it's not an equality. Oh well, this is a countable set, oh. um, and it's and and uh, the you know the space of provides design. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's a countable. They're only countably many three, three, three manifolds, and they're in you know they're in this uncountable space in this dense way. But um, yeah. Any more questions? Any questions from Zoom? I wonder who the cat is. <laughs> okay, if there are no more questions, let's uh, thank Melanie again. Thank you.